So this patient's coming in for uh, now removal of a lesion that's been developing over the course of the last couple of months. Um, this may look like, in some fashions, almost like a cyst that's erupting, um, but this is more characteristic of what we call either a keratoacanthoma or a squamous cell cancer. Now, there's debate as to whether those two entities are actually different or whether a keratoacanthoma is just a well-differentiated squamous cell cancer. But because they're so similar, we don't take chances and we usually take these off. And the only way to absolutely differentiate them is pathologically. So as opposed to just doing a shave biopsy and then having to come back and do more, we'll choose instead to take this all out and make sure that we have good op uh, margins. And the reasons we want to do that is because squamous cell cancers. So if you remember, there's, there's four main types of skin cancers. There's basal cell cancer, there's squamous cell cancers, there's a Merkel cell cancer, that's sort of an entity unto itself, and then there's melanoma. Melanomas are obviously the more aggressive and bad ones. Merkel cell can sometimes be associated therein. Squamous cell cancers are a bit more aggressive than basal cell cancers. Um, but because squamous cell cancers are a bit more aggressive, they have about a 2 to 5% risk of, of uh, metastasizing. We certainly want to take those out with good margins. Um, so this is why this is frozen now. We've got lidocaine underneath it and some to prop it up. And we've indicated the, the, the area which we'll cut along. We always do an ellipse because that's what will actually keep the tissues come back together nicely. Um, so this is well frozen for you, no pain there at all. So again here, we're dealing with, the, this is the dorsum of the hand. So this is going to be something that's supplied by the radial nerve. Radial nerve will be deep to these structures. So we're going to be still working within the actual epidermis and the dermis. Um, from a cancer perspective, if it's just in the epidermis, it's considered in situ or what we call Bowen's disease if we're dealing with squamous cell cancer. And the differentiation for other cancers means it's, it's gone actually deeper. So it's just on the side here. I want to make sure that I have a margin there. We don't need a huge margin, usually about half a millimeter. So sometimes we measure that in micrometers. There we go. So when we're through the dermis, and usually in older tissue, so when people are over 60, do you want to dab that for yeah. me? <laughs> <laughs> Just over 60. Okay. <laughs> so that layer will be thin. Just dab that for me, please. So here we certainly want to be into the hypodermis. So that's the fatty layer that's there. Just like that. So just put pressure on that for me. So you can see that that's now taken out. So it's clear on this side, clear on this side. Obviously, we'll depend more on the microscopic evaluation. So that's out there. So just from a practical standpoint, just release that for me. This is a small capillary that's bleeding here. That's not a lot of bleeding. So even though it looks like it's a lot. And I won't even try to cauterize that. This is something that just if my stitch is in, we should be able to tamponade that just with pressure. It's okay. It probably won't be captured in this first one, I imagine. It's probably going to be in the second one. So the only reason I bring that up is the tendency can be to just be a little bit panicked with that. 
as long as you move your way along and you put your stitches in, you'll capture it. And then that's going to cease for us. Still being sure that they have that, that these lay flat, just like that. You're feeling okay? Yeah. I'm in good hands. <laughs> this is true. So you can see how well um, this is closing together. I would tell you again, skin that's a little bit more mature is more forgiving as well. So it actually allows you to pull it through because the elasticity is not as strong, so it doesn't fight you as much. And these really do heal quite well. So it seems like a really big elliptical incision um, will come together nicely and move that right from the face. Thank you. So here where I'm catching the uh, threads of my other sutures, we can just take those out afterwards. So don't worry about those when you're doing it. So here, if it borders up a bit, I usually will go in one layer and then make sure the needle holds down the little subcutaneous fat in the hypodermis, just so it doesn't pucker through as much. Do you want a second? Yeah, that's what I asked. The only debate I have is whether here, where it's oozing a little bit more, whether I'll put one in between just to make sure I catch that capillary. So I'll, I'll make that decision in a second. You're still feeling good? Besides mm -hmm. feeling stupid. All right. <laughs> I wouldn't feel like that. Everybody waits on these. So, you know, I've seen people who've had them for years and years and years. And because they see them on a daily basis, they aren't aware of how much it's grown. Oh, I've been watching this one. You can see what's happening there. It's knotted inappropriately. So just cut that out, Rada. Mm -hmm. Just cut that there. Good. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that happens when I tie it over. Like, and that's why I always check to see if your suture's laying flat properly. And it's easy to fix. So I'll show you the difference here. So I pulled it through too quickly and I caught it on its own on itself. So just have that please. So that one's laying flat just like that. And so we saw this, I saw this initially, she presented to the clinic uh, four days ago. 
And we always want to get on top of these quickly because it does grow very fast. And as you can see from how we did this, you are forced to do an elliptical incision. So if you wait too long, um, that ellipse gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and then things do get complicated. So again, even, even with, with the skin that we're having to deal with here in terms of it being very forgiving, uh, if you have that be a few more millimeters in diameter, you then have to excise a much bigger area, and this becomes a little bit more complicated. So, so again, if this had been this wide, we'd then have to be starting down here, ending up here, and you can get into a very big area that sometimes is a little bit more complex. Now, looking at this, what I look for in terms of debating whether I'll add an extra stitch, if this area was more swollen, then I'd worry about bleeding underneath, and I would actually add another one just to make sure that we caught that capillary. But this looks pretty good. It's maintaining its actual um, smoothness, and it's not billowing underneath or bulky. So that looks pretty good. So we're just going to put dressing on this, and then we'll see here back in about 10 days. So this is just a follow-up video. This is uh, the patient who had that uh, exophytic lesion that we removed. We were wondering whether this was a keratoacanthoma or a uh, squamous cell cancer. Pathology came back consistent with an actual uh, squamous cell cancer and the margins were completely clear. So I'm just doing this follow-up to show you how well she's healing. Um, so I'm going to take these stitches out now um, and I'm alone today so I'm just showing you a picture of this. But I'm hoping I'm going to have her back in a couple weeks and then we'll see how her healing looks from there. So I just wanted to update you from that perspective. So this is now what it looks like with the uh, stitches out. Um, you can see it's well opposed, nothing sort of opening back up. And then we'll just follow up and see what this looks like in a couple of weeks. So this is follow up of where we removed that squamous cell cancer. Um, she's really healed quite nicely. She has some, just where the cream's irritating a little bit, but this is the incision line right through there. And you can see, you can barely see it, you know, which is to her credit. So clearly healing quite nicely, which is what we'd expect.